Hello everybody, welcome back to Language Litigation and Integration Part 123, More Freedom Bullets. So, sure, you've seen on the news, we've had more great, great contributions to our society by our highest thinkers, our most loving and contributing members of our society. We have, I think, current live updates, 21 dead children. 19 dead children and two teachers were killed in a shooting at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas on Tuesday, the Texas Department for Public Safety said. The 18-year-old gunman is dead, officials said. He shot his grandmother before the mass shooting, authorities say, and she remains hospitalized in critical condition. Can't forget Granny. President Biden called on the U.S. Attorney's collective pain into political action following the deadliest elementary school shooting since Sandy Hook in 2012. So, getting all over the news, obviously. Last week we had the, the, the Buffalo one, which we covered in depth. Again, had to stop and get the McDonald's. But again, we'll be talking about, obviously, school shootings and just shootings and mass shootings and more shootings and other shootings and murders. We have uh, and it, casual conversations type of episode, but a lot, a lot of shootings again since the past like two days since we started the last language video, and then just more talking points and current events, and then a couple memorable quotes from Easter. But again, let, let's just talk about the the psychological difference between again Buffalo and what and and Uvalde, Texas, and so. And again, it's just like a little bit about gun laws, a little bit about gun regulation, and a little bit just about human nature and psychology. Again, clearly, again, both 18 years of age, and it's just like pathetic fucks, man. Like, I, there's nothing to say. It's just people who are underdeveloped, insecure, and the reason, the thing that I want to focus is on is they default to their narrative, right? If you're a doctor, and you work really hard, you wear the white jacket, now you got the authority. If you're the hardworking entrepreneur, now you got... You know, you got income, you got business, you have growth, you're making progress in your life, and you know, you, you get rewarded and now you might be, you know, exposing yourself on planes to secretaries because you're that you're that guy. And if you're the tormented, angsty teenager, well, what's your default thing? Is again, primitive animals are gonna go shoot a bunch of fucking people. And so the way you stop school shootings is to change the sentiment. Not an easy thing to do, right? I mean, I've talked about like the war in Ukraine and war versus school shootings. It's a completely different sentiment, right? If people are defending their hometown, it's still people killing each other, but obviously the intention and the, and the rationality and why you're doing it is tremendously fucking different. And so again, gl global publication of, of, of foundational science would certainly help war more so than individual mass shootings. Because again, that's, that's their service to the group. Again, we use the beta male analogy. Again, a group with no alpha males, just different groups, different factions, and sometimes they war together, but they'll never like actually be able to run the whole the whole village. And so, how is how is the angsty eighteen year old teenager that's been you know devalued out of life, bullied too much, or this or that, or bullshit like that? When now he's going to go serve his group by killing people, and that's that's really the, the psychological mindset. Because you can sit here and call them scum and trash, which they absolutely fucking are. The only bad thing about this story, besides the 20, 19 dead children, is that the gunman didn't get tortured first. Taken apart limb by limb. Piece by fucking piece. And last, the buffalo dude buried him up to his eyeballs in the fucking dirt and put firing ants in his body until he fucking gets eaten out over 14 days. Going, when, again, I didn't, know, I didn't know you could get like worse than just mowing down people in a fucking grocery store. But now, we're gonna take that self-hatred and you go to people who are legitimately completely defenseless. Third graders, fourth graders. Uh, again, I don't want to say it's a completely different mindset because it's both fucking wipe them off the planet, but it is pure hatred. It's pure resentment. It's pure desire for carnage. I'm going to show them they didn't listen to me. I'm going to make a name for myself and shit like that. And it is kind of contagious in the sense like, you know, people talking on forums wanting to one-up each other and competing over nothing, right? Some people compete over salaries. School shooters and masters are going to compete over bodies. And so that's really the psychology of what's going on. And what, what do you do about it, right? Obviously, political, somebody's directly calling for, 
the left will be directly calling for uh, gun regulation, and the right will directly be kind of like defending and saying it's you know it's an individual person. And so again, my my views on gun control absolutely for I saw the the, the Kerr the whoever the Golden State uh, uh, coach was head coach his his going off on it. But again, at some point you have to enforce the law. Again, publishing my paper will not stop school shootings, but it's changing the sentiment of the, of the, of the population to, to change the default of what that narrative is going to do. I'm having a terrible day. I'm going to make a name for myself. These people are completely willing to die. The people have to understand they're not, they're not like in Ben Shapiro saying having police have, need to have the equipment they have. They're not going to be able to stop the intention. And so my, my views on gun control, absolutely for, again, any, I'm for what makes fucking sense. And again, not a strict constitutionalist. What fucking makes fucking sense? What gets shit fucking done? And the only real solution is to change the sentiments so you don't default to that narrative. For gun control, absolutely. For background checks, so I don't know what you would ch check for, right? Again, probably me mental instability, past past felonies, risk risk of violent offender stuff like that. Again, do people change? Can they change? Apparently, fucking not at the whole species level. In, in practice, behaviorally, could they? In theory, yes. They should just have to do so, but our whole species can't change anything. Can't, we can't behave in any fucking facet whatsoever. ever. And so, again, some moderation, again, like, you know, one, uh, uh, a, a person that is not going to uh, shoot up a place or that, that is well trained and stuff can have a hundred guns and not do anything bad with them. One person, again, the, I think the Uvalde, Texas dude just had a handgun and maybe a rifle. So it wasn't even like your typical AR situation or, you know, even like the, the Buffalo dude with the, the armored things. He was just with a fucking handgun just shooting kids. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. And so, you know, banning, banning high round magazines wouldn't have stopped this one. So it's like, what exactly gun control do you place on it? Certainly not, you know, the NRA Second Amendment, let all guns run, run wild. I would own a gun if I if I could. Again, I'm a, I, 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 I'm a part of the cannabis program in Ohio, so you can either eat and sleep or defend yourself. So I can't. I have to choose eating and sleeping over defending myself. But and I, I don't put on no gun on public. So unless wants someone to come in my house and kill me, which please, please, thank you. But in all seriousness, again, probably some sort of limitation on high capacity magazines, bump stocks, switches on the Glocks. You know, just shit like that. Right, I mean, there's. Do we need? Do you need ten thousand guns? No. <laughs> do, do, is, does somebody having ten thousand guns that knows what to do with them bother me? No. Do I feel threatened by them? No. You have to change the intention of the motivation that comes from education, insecurity, and societal sentiment. That is what you have to fucking change, and that comes from everybody changing their behavior. Normal is what everybody does, and so we have to change that edgy, angsty eighteen-year-old their thought to go, let's go hurt people. It's just fucking disgusting. So some, certainly for background checks, again, I don't know exactly what you would check for. But again, then, then every other week here, at least here in Columbus, will be like s three dudes backed into a, 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 a sporting goods store and stole a hundred assault rifles. So my guess is those dudes are not going to be fucking doing background checks when they resell those, those items. And so it's like someone who's motivated, again, that motivated, get completely willing to die, just going in to cause as much carnage as possible, they're still going to be available to get a gun. I mean, whether people want to admit that or not. So regulation, absolutely, was, is it truly going to stop the intention and the motivation to get to fucking slaughter children or just random people? No. And so certainly, practically, absolutely, for regulation of some type, to some level, absolutely 100% uh, for owning, owning weapons to, to some capacity as well. And so training... Understanding, education, tra changing the sentiment. And so, I really don't like to insert politics at all, but again, it's just, it's not a practical, clear, what you do to stop this shit. And so, fuck that guy. The only thing that I wish was he would have got taken into custody and then tortured, taken apart limb by fucking limb, piece by fucking piece. Cut his eyes out, cut his tongue out, cut his dick off. Law-abiding citizenship for real in real life should be fucking happening. Well, he's dead. I mean, obviously you have to neutralize the situation. But the only bad thing about him dying once is he couldn't die twice. And so we also had another lovely scenario in Alabama. A man kills his teenage daughters, 13 and 16, his wife and then himself. So another angle of profound selfishness with lethal force. Yeah, 
I have, uh, I think they were both deaf. I don't really think that has much to do with it, to be honest. But I just saw some comment on Reddit like, maybe you couldn't reach out for mental health. It's like, yeah, maybe, but that's not going to cause you to blow away your 13 and 16 year old daughters. And so, it just again, it's like, what, what's the human psychology to approach this? Again, selfishness at the highest level. People that see their children as extension of themselves. Again, a lot of people, don't, most vast majority of people don't kill their children, but a lot of people, again, you know, they might not, they want their kid to be a doctor or to be a lawyer, or they have some expectation of the life path their children's going to take because they see them as an extension of them. Horrible parenting mindset. Grow up, everybody. Terrible, terrible approach. But this is, this is, this is at the extreme level. And so the, the report said not much on the motivation yet for this one, but again, it's selfishness and just, just again, ownership. These, this is my family. These three independent living creatures that function by themselves, not nah, they're mine. So I hate myself so much, I'm gonna end my life, but first I'm gonna take the kind of parts of me that I still kind of see as mine with me. Because that's just weird, conflicted, weird shit. I think this dude was like 54. And so we've had, we had an event like that kind of here in Columbus, or at least in Westerville, probably probably years back, I don't know, probably about 10 years back, but another just killed, killed his kids, and then himself, maybe his wife as well, but certainly killed young kids, and then himself. So we got school shooters, we got people killing their kids at home. It's just fucking disgusting. Human beings are fucking disgusting. They are complete failures at everything they have ever meant to do. Again, our big model of the universe, don't die, reproduce, and think. And so what, what's, what are we going to do when we feel weird because we can't reproduce, we can't get the girl we want, the guy we want, the job we want, the promotion we want, the life we want, well now we're just going to revert back to killing people. Because not die, so now we're going to project that out into the world. That is what is fucking occurring. I think there was a couple other, oh yeah, and then there's one other violent thing than just regular talking points past that. Um, we had an elite cyclist is killed for letting someone's boyfriend clap cheeks. So some, some chick banged some dude's boyfriend, some girl's boyfriend, and then that girl killed her. And so another, another le use of lethal force because of human behavior. Again, this is just more territorial. Again, like most murderers, people know each other. I mean, even gangbangers, even if they're affiliated. I mean, there, there's some direct, direct beef, some tension, some motivation, some instigation, some antagonism. But, so there's not, not too much to comment here. But again, just ownership. I mean, when, again, not that I would ever have a relationship. Again, it's honest. Again, I'm not talking like a sexual relationship. That's not even like possible. But just like, again, a respectful relationship that doesn't become abusive because I don't have constitutional rights. It's not possible to occur because of human behavior. These are the extremes. But again, everyone who, you know, will bend the rules a little bit to get a promotion, will talk bad about somebody behind their backs for a little bit to, to get ahead in their career. It's the same literal behavior at different levels of severity. It is what the fuck is occurring. And so, love triangle killing, which is very, fairly common. Again, just ownership, but again, potential for the future. When somebody's in a relationship and they have all of these dreams, hopes and dreams and goals for the future, which again, I don't have those at all to the point where I can't eat and sleep properly, so it's literally torture. So what a privilege that would be to have at all. To get even just family, just like friends, anything, let alone an actual significant other life partner. Jesus Christ. How would I get a wife? That's impossible. But uh, just just once once someone takes that away from you, you think about oh, this monkey was was banging her cheeks and going down on her and oh oh no oh, no oh, that was my that was my special spot, so now I'm gonna kill her and it reverse obviously for females and dudes but just territorial and primitive behavior. So those were our three lovely violent episodes since like five minutes ago. Well, we have a couple other ones. The first getting away from specific to the U.S. But we had the first war crime defendant was sentenced to life in prison from the Ukraine war, a 21-year-old Russian soldier, and he was said to have been following illegal orders and killed somebody. So if you follow illegal orders, you get punished by law. Huh. American law enforcement and global law enforcement have a sworn oath to uphold the law, the constitution of your countries. Are you doing so? And why are you not doing so? Because you're following illegal orders. And treason is the result of that. Cannabis killing people because you won't legalize it and because it's proven, not speculation, not open for dissent, prove it. You can demonstrate academic merit like me, then we can have a discussion. We won't have a discussion. We will literally freestyle proofing off of each other. It's not a joke. 
And so, again, at some point, the beta male groups of factions have to fucking listen to science. Not to a leader, just to science. And they can't, because they're so fucking primitive. They're shooting people at supermarkets. They're thinking of the kids. Mass shooters, 2022. At least someone's thinking of the kids. Obviously being fucking dryly sarcastic, because, again, nobody's doing more for fucking education than me. But, yeah, if you, if you, follow, if you follow illegal orders and it results in death... Because of your actions, you can get life in prison, and it's a war crime. But if you don't publish science, which is directly treasonous and violation of your own constitution, and it kills people, we say, oh, that doesn't count, doubt it. Oh, we, Dr. Oz, that's going to make people lazy, because that's like, the, the, again, that's the default narrative from the past 70 years. So yeah, get that behavior. This behavior isn't happening anywhere, guys. To my old buddy Tim, says we don't need to talk about this anymore. Yeah, it's the only thing we need to talk about. We don't need to talk about it. We need to change it. We need to be about it. We need to act differently. Moving on to other talking points. So a couple other legal geopolitical things. The Taliban bans polygamy. Or, yeah, polygamy. <laughs> Multiple wives. Oh, shit. We're taking over Afghanistan. Oh, we got it back. Joe, Joe, got us, Joe went away with terrible, terrible planning. What are we going to do now? Oh, shit, where are all the bitches? Yo, Ahmed, one less wife, bro. Hey, you got eight wives already, Ahmed. Maybe six, leave some bitches for me. So, Taliban bans polygamy because they need some more bitches in the clubs. Biden says the U.S. will militarily intervene defending Taiwan. Again, China, don't, just stop doing dumb shit for fucking Christ's fucking sake. Not for, for fuck Christ, for like fucking humanity's sake, just like do stuff. Like, like less killing people. Less aggressive, less aggression, like more helping, more education, more respect to your own laws, more prosperity, less fucking invading. Jesus Christ. But, you know, obviously the, you know, I'll just leave it at that, man. I mean, I watched Ben Shapiro talk about, oh, it's good for the U.S. because it defends our infrastructure. Yeah, but it's like, like at some point, you guys aren't, again, there was one world and you're not the leader of any of it. Jesus Christ, I mean, you're just not. So... Stop doing dumb shit. She, stop it. Ni hao. No shi hao. No, 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 no invasions. Ugh. But what's next? Marijuana violations have been taken, have taken the 10,000 truck drivers off the road. How has drug testing affected my job search? A national blacklist for offenders for life, LOL. Again, we would not want people to have access to medicines that limit in infla inflammatory and cancerous cells that demonstrate and proliferate ca cannabinoid ligands and get neutralized once that, once that ligand links up. We don't want that to occur, right? But again, again, how has it affected my job search? Again, I need to consume cannabis to eat and sleep because of being scapegoated for no other reason besides being socially isolated to the point of torture. And so, Again, do I want to go have some shit job? I'm talking years ago, but have some shit job or eat or sleep at night. It's like, see, it's like not a conversation. And so again, I don't. If this is the United States of America. I don't have access to healthcare because of fraud, like actual real fucking fraud. And Michael Mina goes on Lex Friedman with his hair slicked back, and Scott Gottlieb goes on CN CNN, and and all of the great doctors I know, they're just out there curing the world, and they're not. They're just defaulting to narratives. It's what the fuck happens. Not 99% of the time, 100% of the time. And so again, the supply chains, yeah, yeah, good job, guys. But drug testing, again, I couldn't get basically any fucking job that had drug testing for cannabis because I needed to eat and sleep better, which is, again, healthcare over money. I'm going to choose that every single time. And so we, we live in a carnival. It's not even carnival, it's hell. This is fucking hell. Again, not the analogy underdeveloped babies, grown-ass baby children that don't know how to fucking behave, they don't raise their kids, they don't know how to fucking behave, they just steal all of my shit, facilitate violence, and say, what are we going to do about it? At some point, we have to cross the bridge of growing up. But v marijuana violations and drug violations, again, you should be able to do any substance that does not, again, all drugs' lives matter, all of them. They should all be legalized, they all, uh, absolutely, we've talked about that extensively. But... It's just, again, this is nonsense. It's, it's idyllic. And the ideals don't exist. 
The Premier League soccer season ends. What are my thoughts? And watch the Premier League this year. Pretty, pretty. I don't say religiously because I don't really have a team. But on Saturday, Sunday, there's nothing else on TV besides uh, Animal Odyssey and Oh Baby, the just baby animal shows, which I like those shows. But uh, the I like watching Premier League soccer. I haven't really been watching much hockey this year at all. But I just like, I like good soccer games because I don't have a team. Uh, I'm absolutely dumbfounded that you say Leicester City. I don't know how the fuck that where that EIC goes. But how did it end up? It was a really cool finale. We had Man Manchester City and Liverpool both in contention. Man City was playing. I think Aston Villa and Liverpool was playing. I, I forget. I forget. But it was like Man City scored three goals in less than six minutes. So if Man City won, they for sure were going to win. And so I was watching that game. And then Aston Villa goes up on Man City. I believe it was that. I forget who the fourth team was. but And then, because if Man City won, Liverpool couldn't have won. And so Man City goes down. I think it was like I think it was either 1-0 or 2-0. And then Liverpool was up 1-0. So I switched over to the Liverpool game. And then, you know, because when you're watching one game, the one time they score on the game, you're not watching. All of the announcers start talking about it. And so then it's like three minutes later, Man City has three goals, and so I flip back over to that game because of, again, if, if they won Liverpool, it's Liverpool ended up winning, but and Man City won, so you had 92 points for Man City. And you get you get three points for a win, one for a draw, and nothing for a loss. And so you got the relegation. Who got relegated this year? We got Burnley, Watford, and Norwich City. And relegation is like when you get like I was like kicked out of the league, but you go back to just like the the, the league under you. So you have the, like the, I don't know what they call it, the something league, the, the just English football league, then the Premier League, then the Champions League. Still not exactly sure if that's just like a tournament or if it's just like you have games in the Premier League as well as in the uh, in the uh, uh, championship, Champions League. So I guess that's probably how it works. But I think for the Champions League final, we got, I think it's uh, Real Madrid and I think it's Liverpool in the final there. So I thought the end of the Premier League season was actually really fun. But what do I think about crazy fans jumping on the field and throwing stuff at players? What happens is kind of a problem. There was another basketball thing that went viral about a player, a person getting stopped running on the field. Again, just another level of pathetic shit. Maybe not going to shoot up a school, but when my when a, an opposing team player scores a goal, I'm going to throw a rock at his head. And it's just like there was a video of like some c c catastrophe in Mexico City where like 17 people were killed by the soccer game just rioting. And so it's just the same primitive behavior. Oh, let's go to a soccer game and have fun with our friends. Now we're in a group, now we're in a group. Oh, now the other team's winning. Oh, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna engage in reckless behavior. And it's gonna resort to violence. That's what beta fucks do, 100% of the time. So fans jumping on the field is disgusting. Throwing stuff at players is disgusting. After 900 hours of observation, chimpanzees have been documented using hundreds of unique phrases. Wow, vibration contains sound? Vibration indicates meaning? Vibration constructs words? Words contain meaning? Who would have thunk it? Wow, I wonder if someone would have proved that. That would have been pretty interesting. It'd be pretty cool stuff. Oh, I guess one other legal thing. I watched a video, this is from 2020, so not super new, March 2022, a, a man named Kevin Penn, a 47-year-old business owner, was punched in the face by Alabama police officers while trying to report a robbery. That was kind of like the Reddit high, highlight, I read through the article, the guy was armed, he was holding the suspect in the back, and then he refused to put the gun down, which is, which is just weird to me. Again, I, I imagine he just hiked up. Someone comes into your store and it turned out to just be it's shoplifting, not actually like robbery. And the distinct difference between shoplifting, just stealing something out of a store versus a robbery, even having a mimic gun, fake gun, but, but aggressively approaching a person with either a real or a fake pose to be weapon, that would be a robbery as opposed to shoplifting, stealing. But, you know, he, he, calls, he calls the police, no problem having a gun, no problem defending your store, and then the police get there and they tell you to put your gun down, you should definitely put your fucking gun down. Again, I have no respect for the police because they don't do their fucking job. They're absolutely ho hopped up weirdos that failed at everything in their lives, so now they take a six months training course and they can shoot you. But it, they're, they're, they're the authority, not to say unfortunately, they just need to be better trained. But 
he's probably he's probably just like excited or just like on adrenaline, like no, I'm not gonna put my weapon down after you know having an aggressive interaction. But the Reddit highlight was like he was punched in the face for trying to report a robbery. He was punched in the face. He refused to put down a gun, and so he had a broken jaw and lost some teeth. But I mean, uh, once the situation is neutralized, if you got the guy tied up in the fucking back and the cops come here, why the fuck would you still be holding a gun? Again, just reckless, reckless behavior once, once again from a thousand different angles. What do I think about honorary PhDs, music versus science versus others? I don't know. I'm, I'm merit based, so if again if you put up a math subject, you probably should get like five PhDs a day. Again, could, could pick comparable to what you've done. But again, if you can demonstrate skill sets, I and mean, a PhD is supposed to be adding to your field of knowledge, and so. Uh, like if you can demonstrate music and then you go give a, a performance at a music college and they give you a degree for that I don't see like why why is that different than a bunch of people who are all pathetic as fuck sitting in a college classroom saying they studied for four years when they really just didn't contribute anything I mean time so you, you I went to college for four years how many times did you spend actively doing research improving shit again my life's a little different but for the a, 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 average academic like you're not actually doing research all the time. You're just you're just not. And so, if, if you can demonstrate merit, music I think would be something. Science would be something. But like if you if you gave a, but I mean I don't know like public speaking. If you gave a commitment speech and you gave a good public speech, you know I don't I don't mean I don't know I don't know what the the quantity for a journalism degree or a public speaking degree would be. You know public speaking I don't know why that's a degree, but. You can demonstrate merit, like in journalism, if you do the stuff, if you write the shit, and a school gives you a, a, a piece of paper for it, I don't, I don't see why that's bad. But, like, if you just gave, like, a, a commencement speech, and here's a PhD in physics, it's like, you probably shouldn't do that. So I'm not, I'm not super against honorary PhDs. I'm against calling them that. If they demonstrate merit and they've earned it, I don't know, maybe pay the tuition fee or whatever, like, a, like right, right now, right, right now, obviously I can't have constitutional rights, but I'd go pay whatever the fuck the full tuition is just to like publish my shit or something but again I'm blacklisted by the entire fucking species so I'm not really against honorary PhDs with merit obviously with merit Noah Thompson wins American Idol 2022 I watched his performance on one of the Today shows and it's just amazing and I, I try to audition for these shows and I can't get an audition because I can't do anything I can just, oh, I can have a music career yesterday if people just like click on the fucking videos, which they won't do. Because what am I? I'm a scapegoat. I demonstrate merit. All of the pathetic fucks get offended by that. They push me out of the group and they say, well, if Brad's actually doing something, somebody else will help him. Somebody else will take care of this responsibility. And guess what nobody does? Just like when somebody gets raped and 60 people hear it and then nobody does anything about it. It's like, yeah, that is me at the whole species level and the people that could do something are, li are literally told legally they can't, which is treason. Following unlawful orders that it results in death is like the highest level of crime ever, which is everybody. So, wish I could participate at some point. My towel hung itself up. Again, ooh, we had had that big meeting on the UFO, which is direct. Everyone's lying about it. Dog parks cracking up pretty much daily now. But my towel hung itself up. Again, this happens like this sh shit moves around my apartment like twice a week. I don't look for it. I don't kill a fuck at all. Aliens or extraterrestrials. I'm not sure which group you guys are in. You're on the surface. You're from outer space. In the ocean more, what's up? But I don't know, maybe I just want a spoon. Like I'll be the little spoon. Maybe maybe connect the world's intergalactic worlds to spoon me or something. I don't know. But I'll probably spook me a little bit, but I don't know. Climb on in. But seriously, I have two towels. One of them just I have a black towel and a gray towel. And the black towel just does better, like it doesn't hold its smell that well. And everybody knows the next day, even without if you just hang your towel back up, the next day it's completely clean. It's been magically Re re reset to, to perfect. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Once you hang your towel up and the next day shows up, it's completely clean again. But I was doing my laundry t two, three nights ago, and I just forgot to transfer the, the load of laundry from the washing machine to the dryer. And so I, I, I never use my black or my gray towel for a bath towel, really, just like a hand towel, because it, it just doesn't hold, it holds body smell worse. And so I explicitly remember wiping my hands off on the gray towel right on my on my uh, on my dresser and then and then I get up in the morning and there it is my black towel is now and in my bathroom it had no towel on the rack and up get up the next morning there's my towel hanging up on the rack sick my light bulbs changed itself my lawn my, my towels hanging itself up
Unfortunately, my when when my brakes went out in the winter, my, my brakes didn't fix themselves. I can I can move my towel and I can change my light bulb. Next time, just do just do something little little little. It costs a little more money. A thousand dollars to replace some brakes. Maybe jump there. Help help me there. I'll be really really in, into the aliens then. Jesus. <laughs> but Jonathan Isaac should stood instead of kneeling with Black Lives Matter because of Jesus dot 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 lol dot 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 and denies the COVID vaccine dot 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 because Jesus loves so much dot 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 lol to the 69th power. And now now we have all of these beta males that are resorting to violence, but now we have the ones that want to try to try to the the flicker of 0.000001% of human beings that try to think at some point in time, not die reproduce in the mythical level of thinking where he has his basketball career, number one player in Florida, in the NBA. But now he wants to think. So what is he going to think? Well, you need words to represent your thoughts. So then you're going to, need to be exposed to the rest of the species ontology, which is, again, what God did. Spread the word of God. He proved shit. This is a massive proof. That is what he did. And so then you have the law, the, again, the range of logic, which you can't understand. So you just start mimicking other people's behavior. That is what is occurring. But yeah, Jesus, probably like the top two or three documented scientists ever on this planet would not going against biological law. He would get the fucking vaccine. And so, but again, like the think of that, like the sentiment of that. We're gonna kneel for Black Lives Matter to show solidarity, solidarity with the black people. But Jonathan Isaac's gonna stand up and show honor for our, our military service members that fight for our freedom. Don't you see how this is a pile of hypocrites? There's no fucking freedom. I can't pay a million dollars to stop getting tortured. And then social justice. Well, yeah, no social justice that I have ever exposed myself to has ever included me in those groups. Obviously not black, but you know, I, I don't do groups. <laughs> I don't do groups at all. But, again, it's just, it's just hypocrites, man. People don't know how to behave, so they mimic each other's behavior, and it's stupid. Monkeypox sweeps the nation. Sick. So, again, this said mostly sexually transmitted, so I'm on the clear on that. <laughs> Don't have to worry about that for me, I guess. But monkeypox doesn't look too fucking fun. And what's what's the next plague gonna be? We're on like plague like thirteen thousand. Mark Cuban and Wheezy F Baby exchange words. So I think Mark Cuban tweeted some uh, uh, Wheezy F Baby a little Wayne quote at him. He's sitting front row about I think one of the Mavs are in the playoffs. I don't know who the I don't follow the NBA. But then Wheezy F Baby said you a hoe or something, and then I'll piss in your mouth, and then I just Googled it, and they, they seem to be on the mend. They, uh, they were sitting courtside next to each other, I don't know, maybe giving each other hand jibs, making up. And just like Bonobos, oh, you're welcome back into the group, little Wayne. Oh, no problem, Mark, you're welcome back into the group, and then they just kind of like jerk each other off, just to show solidarity. But I did listen to uh, the Ice Cream Paint Job remix from like 12 years ago recently, which is actually still fucking flames. In the last couple things, my thoughts on the uh, my thoughts on a month off of gym, uh, off of the gym, and a couple of memorable quotes from Easter. So again, I took a month off the gym. Again, still don't have access to healthcare. That is stem cells. That is cannabis. That is again my ear infection's been gone for years, but it's just still residual. Like one out of ten uncomfortable sometimes, almost gone. But again, two years to kind of get uh, the correct medicine, which we've documented in the series because of incompetence, arrogance, medical community is disgusting. But no real, no real change in my back. But again, even going back to the workout, working out, uh, I have a sore the first day after working out, 48 hours of delayed onset of muscle soreness. But didn't really feel much better, didn't really feel much worse, to be completely honest. So back at the gym, pretty much one, one day on, two days off, and just until my back can get better. But again, I don't really care about lifting heavy weights anymore. I just like to be able to, again, expend the daily, just be tired after a workout on a given day. But again, because I'm full mobility, I'm full ankle mobility, hip mobility, shoulder mobility, and most people never have developed that. And so I'm not trying to really build strength, don't really fucking care, but I just like to be able to exercise on a daily basis. So, in conclusion of today's lovely episode, uh, just some quotes from Easter. Again, this, again these are all like, these, all of these quotes are in like the same conversation. So again, I have plenty of fine time with my parents, eating dinner, and then, you know, my mom, in the, in the same kind of time frame, you know, we're talking about, you know, I'm, I'm getting a house, and again, the thing that I hate about, when I talk to my mom, she just has to, she just has to insult me when it comes to fucking money. And mother, 
Love you, love you a lot. When it comes to money, fuck you. <laughs> We're sitting there talking about a house, and, and again, I'm just ta talking, you know, like I'm looking here, again, I'm looking locally to Ohio, and I'm buying a five minute house. A house I'm gonna live in for five minutes until someone calls me and I'm the fuck out of this country. But just something that an easy move, something convenient, that I don't have a big upkeep, just something I can be comfortable in, because I like to do work. I've never been financially stable enough just to focus on creativity, ever, regardless of how pro prolific I am, for real. And so it's not, that's not a flex, that's a, if I actually had human rights of 10x my productivity, in 100 years people are going to say, why the fuck didn't they, people, people change their fucking behavior in any way, capacity whatsoever. <laughs> but we're sitting there, and I'm like, you know, just talking about where I want to move, and I just, I just don't, I don't want a big move, I don't want to have to have a complicated move, so I'm just going to get the suburb of Ohio. And then my mom was talking about it, because I was, I would move out west, but again, I just can't, I don't want a big fucking convoluted thing. And I just make a comment, I was like, you know, I wouldn't go to California. And, and because taxes, all of this other shit. Again, I'm actually trying to leave this country. And my mom's like, you know, I wouldn't let you. And then she kind of like, like shuts herself off. Mother, you have no financial control over me. None, zip, zero. The only reason I don't have access to a fucking fortune, which I've earned, it's mine. It is literally mine. $12 million is a fucking grain of salt. And it is owed to me contractually. Breach of contracts is illegal. In my next episode, I'll review the, the court document. I have a court document saying I can't fucking sue a state because I have no substantial grounding. It is what it is, is the basis of all fucking logic. And so it's just direct fucking lies from the court. And so when the people at the highest levels, the government officials, the business owners, the people that really know what's going on, you just enable this environment where my mother's just going to disrespect my research. It has nothing to do with fucking money. My mother doesn't have financial control over my life. I can't get my property evaluated Valuated, valuation proper because of crime. I can't collect my property because of crime. I can't network with people because of crime. And the thing I want you to do is stop insulting my life's research. I know you guys didn't take one, but one fucking science class your whole life, mother dears. I do love you. But it's just like fucking stop insulting my life. This is my research. This is who I am. This is what I'll do until I'm fucking dead. And so again, it's enabled by the state because they won't release my property. And then every time we talk to my mom, I wouldn't let you move to Florida ma, ma, or California. Mom, you, you can't do it. You're, you don't control me. You, you, you don't. And so it, it's, it's way more so about insulting my life's research. And again, that is completely enabled by every, every lovely federal officer and academic and business owner outside the windows laughing every day. Hey, guys. Hey, hey, team. I don't want to say the apartment building. At least not yet. Hey, guys. But in, in the same conversation, in the same conversation, my mom asked me, are you going out more? Again, I, I think I referenced that quote. Yeah, no, again, I wouldn't let, I, I live, again, 10% real inflation. I already literally live at base level. And that's the thing to my parents, I've never asked you for one penny more than I've ever needed to literally fucking live. And I am owed a fortune. And $12 million is not a fucking fortune. It's a grain of salt of what I'm fucking owed. And I'm not Elon Musk. I'm not going to have borrowed wealth against the shares appreciation of my company. Straight cash, homie. Randy Moss, how'd you pay for that $15,000 ticket? Straight cash, homie. So, just stop insulting my research. It's my life's research. When you talk about money to me because of crime, you end up insulting my research. And it's my entire life. Like, I, didn't, I don't write one paper. I, I list theorems all day. <clears throat> but are you going out more? No, still, literally going out less. I have no friends, so I don't know like how I'd get like, a social event going. I have nothing to do. I have nothing I really want to do. Like, I do like shopping, but that's just expendable income, which I don't have. At the same time, I'm not that, I'm not that lavish, so it's not like I'm dying to go spend money either. So, not going out more. And then it's, it's all the same conversation. And then my dad says, do you have any travel plans? <laughs> because my dad's going to Michigan and getting on a golf trip. It's like, again, I don't have friends to go on trips with. All of those shitty people that, that we've referenced in here, all my old friends, there, I have no friends. Like I, I don't get to socialize at any point in the day. So how would I have travel plans? I don't want to go fucking do stuff by myself. I can walk around here. I mean, I have unified the natural sciences from first principles. I have a working fucking model of physics. So it's not like, go do this, and it's like, wow, ooh, ah. It's like, spend time with people. It's what makes me sound like, wow, ooh, ah. And I don't, because I can't, because I have no friends. Because they all kick me out. I got scapegoated by the entire fucking species. The families of Central Ohio, you guys are so fucking disgusting. You're not going to lie about history. You're not good people. You didn't help. You didn't contribute. You hurt. You actively slow down the progress of scientific discovery. And you destroyed my life and my relationships in the process. So thank you for that, mom and dad. No. 
you, you don't you don't control me. I just ask that you respect my life's research, which is worth a fucking fortune. And again, I don't need one penny. Your state, if you have one penny saved for me, when you guys move on, move on to the next life, it's going to get donated. Not as a disrespect, because I that's what rich people do is like they donate shit. And I personally, the fucking shit that I've earned in my life is not. You can't pay me. There is no way to value what I've done, and it's real. I own fucking knowledge, kind of. You can't actually patent fundamental science, but you have to cite your sources. Lecture like 175 or 275 across all of my educational lectures. And so, not going out, you, you can't choose where I'm going to move, and it's a suburb in Ohio, <laughs> and I don't have any travel plans. So again, it takes me a couple months just to, again, really process all of this shit, and it doesn't stop. It has not stopped. I've been documenting it for four years, and this shit happens every fucking five minutes. So, thank you for watching Language Litigation Integration for 123. More freedom bullets. Get those bulletproof vests, maybe some bulletproof carriages, bulletproof crib, bulletproof, you know, when you carry an actual infant baby around, and get some Kevlar on that, and then enjoy the gauntlet that is the United States Hell of America. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.